Thank you very much to the audience still connected. Today, I have again the great honor to welcome a friend and interior designer from Miami, born in La Habana, Cuba, Rainier Bollard, here with us. Hi, Bowley. Ciao, Paula. Come estás? How are you? <laughs> really, really happy to see you. And uh, thanks for being with us. And thanks to 24 Hours for this great opportunity to talk again together after 15 years, I think. Yes, it's a very long time, but uh, it's very nice to see you and to talk to you. And thank you for having me. Thank you for being together. We met uh, during a, a crazy project in Cuba, in La Habana, where we tried yes. to build, uh, build a space for kids uh, using sustainable uh, materials. And a lot of things changed when you were, uh, since you were studying there in Kuhai University as, as, yeah. a, as a student. Now you are interior design in uh, Miami. So, do you want to tell us more about your experience from uh, from Cuba to to Miami? So, big big change for your life yeah. and your job. Yeah, it was a whole change on everything. The whole it was a change on all the the rest. First, I after I finished working in Cuba after the years that we met in Cuba and work on that project, I went to Milan. And also have the time to share those 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 time with you on on Milan when I was studying, and then uh, finally I land here in Miami, and uh, it was tough. It was uh, the beginning. It was always tough because it's a big transition between uh, the way of work, the way of doing everything, and the way of living too. So after practice design in Cuba, when I practice and study and practice design in Milan, and then. Practice design in Miami is uh, is everything is different, totally different scenarios. But but nothing is uh, you have to learn and you have to adapt to the different techniques and the different even the different styles of design. In in, in between, between Cuba and Milan is not that different because uh, sure. I guess in Cuba there is a big of a of a European base on the on the design education right so there is a lot of uh, similar things between both uh, uh, of course milan you learn a lot of things and you live and uh, experiment design life every time <laughs> and but then the, the 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 work here in in the states is different because uh, uh, even if the there is a lot of influence of the italian design the the typical american design is also different I was lucky to work on a, on a design studio that is the one that is still working now. I've been uh, more than nine years working in this studio uh, where we def def uh, defend the European design and the modern contemporary design and we try to keep up with the trends that are all over the, the world. One thing that I learned definitely was to understand the client here because uh, it's very important to to understand and to to listen to them and then be able to educate them educate the client and uh, after after understand his background right so yes. that's that's that's, that's uh, reading one of the your interesting Reading your interesting statement, uh, I saw that the client is in the center of your uh, consideration and uh, your thought. You write, during the initial stages of the design process, uh, you need to understand the client, educate the client, create a strong link with the client. Uh, can you describe more about this process you, you write in your text? Yes, of course, because uh, I think, and, uh, and also talking about uh, what have changed on the last years of uh, of, uh, of the design practice is that it's more focused on the on the men. Now, even if the design uh, comes itself, if to work for uh, for for to so design a better environment for the men activities, but anyway, the in the last years there is a lot of thing of increasing in the interest of people in in, in design in general. So that's what I think that make the designer 
uh, focus on their own main on clients as the main focus for the on where to start a design process. So I think that's key when you start a project, you need to understand the client, as I said, to listen to him and uh, to pay attention and all the needs and desires that the client wants. So and after that, you can develop a good strategy to start work on him and to, to get to have good communication tools with the client, communication channels with the client. I think that is the, the most important part to then go ahead and, and advance on the development of, of the project. Sure. And uh, uh, do you notice some change, big, big change in, in your job in the last year uh, during and after COVID-19? So uh, your interior designer job changed in, in, a, in a big way or it's more or less the same as in the past? I think the most important change can be the way that we communicate with the clients. Uh, I think that designers in general, as a community or as a profession, we have been open always to change and to new technologies. And we have been always trying to explore new ways to, to, to practice design. Uh, so this hybrid uh, design space or a workspace when everybody don't need to be uh, in an office, uh, so everybody can be or traveling or working on uh, on outside and on a job site or in a different city, and everybody is, is connected. So, for example, in our studio, after the experience, the first months of lockdown that we were all in the office, we were able to keep on developing the projects to to the. Uh, con communication technologies like Zoom, for example, yes. and to apply yeah. all, yeah, to apply all the design softwares to that, uh, to, to interact the design software with the, the communication softwares. And we have been able to do projects from beginning to end without even meet the client in person once, sure. you know? And I think that's the big change on the, on the design office scenarios when you don't necessarily need to meet in person to develop a, a project. So we have developed projects in our cities and during pandemic, and it was not possible to travel or to meet in person. Sure. So we have to really use all those technologies. Uh, that thing is one of the big sh shames on that. And the, the people have been more open to receive uh, the digital work, you know, and uh, everything that is produced yes. to the, the digital technologies. But you saw this changing as an opportunity uh, from your text always. You, you, you say uh, future workspace, they will offer multiple advances, international yeah. collaborations, interdisciplinary intervention, easier access to information and accessible technology. So this pandemic situation uh, gave to you the opportunity to uh, to your studio uh, and to your workplace to understand the new uh, tools and also new way of working, like an opportunity. Do, do you still think that it's an opportunity? We do. We still, because uh, you mentioned, right, what we, that was talking about the international collaborations and the interdisciplinary intervention on all the projects, because uh, together with all this rethinking of the workspace and the digitalization of the work uh, uh, is definitely key in the interaction of the design practice. How we how we gonna focus on how we gonna uh, how to say how we gonna uh, work on each project because uh, for example, the speed of information the speed that the information is gonna be transmitted is gonna be faster the amount of information that can be transmitted is also way more than before and the amount of people that can be sharing information at the same time so before it was too hard. As uh, the old way of doing oh, things that to meet in person and create a big thing of uh, professionals in because everybody have to be at the same time at the same uh, in the same place and right now there's no need to do that for example we are working on a project right now that uh, the client live in in australia and the designers are in london uh -huh. the, we are uh, the co-designers of the project on, on different systems of the interior space. And we are here in Miami. And one of the factories that will be producing some of these very unique things that this project have are in Italy. 
So uh, the only problem there is to manage uh, uh, that the time zone and where what, what time everybody's on this uh, everybody's uh, 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 awake oh. and ready to meet. But it's very simple. We can plan the meetings very quick, and nobody need to travel, and nobody need to to you know to to organize a big schedule of things in order to meet and make those projects a reality. And that is definitely a possibility to interact with professionals all over the world. You know, that it may be in the past, it was very expensive. And, and that's one of the advantages that I would say that have the, the I mean, it's, it's, it's tough to say that there is an advantage of the pandemic. It has been very hard to everybody on the world, but uh, something is that it proof that all those modes of communication and ways of communication really work. That sure, sure. in the past, I, everybody I was agree. like. I do agree, even if the, the rhythm of our life is maybe is faster now, because, you know, before also you had to travel, even for a meeting, uh, we, we went to China, it was insane, you know, to go to China for 11 right. hours, uh, flying to have a meeting on Saturday and then coming back on Sunday. But uh, it was a way also to maybe to stop. Almost uh, during the flight, you need to turn off the mobile and to stop uh, just a uh, few hours. But uh, I, I understand your point of view. Uh, I wanted to ask to you, Bowley, uh, your experience as a person coming from, um, from Cuba, from La Habana, completely different contest, completely different co uh, country, uh, respect where, where you are uh, where now. Uh, so could you bring your, your original identity uh, as a Cuban person to your new life in the USA? How is this mix this must not be easy to to mix yeah. your <laughs> it's not easy but at the same time uh, i know so living in miami is not a city that is so far away from the uh, from of course sure. very different to havana but uh, if there is a place when uh, cubans and latin people in general can be comfortable or more easy transition to the way of living in the states is miami I think there's no city in the in the world like uh, Miami in that sense that is so many cultures and so many it's very strong the Latin presence here so many yes. of the way of doing are definitely coming from the Latin countries because most of the people that work here are, sure. are Latin for example in our office uh, that uh, we have been here working for more than 15 years from the original founders of, of the office uh, we are uh, the whole team is uh, is from Latin uh, originally. So we have people from Argentina, from Venezuela, and from from Brazil. So you know this. Uh, I will say that um, pass through pass through Italy before arrive here in in the states. It was a big school. Uh, because one of the main changes in of the work in Havana and in Cuba in general and the work in, in Milan and in the States is the focus on marketing and the focus on the product as a sell product, you know, as something to be sold. That's, uh, sure. that's something that definitely uh, have a big impact on me. How do you focus your design concept and your design ideas, not only into all the elements that are intrinsic on design, like ergonomic or or color shapes or all that things. But besides that, you have to be a strong uh, point in the marketing and the, sure. the costs and the production and many things that make you more, uh, more make you more real. And I would say that was the the main thing. Uh, it's were before in Cuba, things that were a more fixed, uh, like not fake, but not, not totally real as they are here. And as you have to respond to a lot of different uh, parts related to production and, and marketing. Sure. So if I well understand that the Italian experience inspired you uh, as a professional, as designer a lot. Uh, uh, what inspired, yes, inspired you? What about Italy? I don't know, Design Week in Milan or uh, the lifestyle or what exactly? 
Well, I think the first thing is that uh, being Milan, that is a city that is so linked to design, it was very strong because even if coming from Havana and from the design school in Havana, I believe it's a very good school with a lot of, uh, and also the architectural school that was when we met in, in Havana. It's a very strong, uh, there is a very strong base on for, for design. So that education is very good. Uh, but uh, to be, be in Milan and breathe and uh, interact with the design all the time, I think it has a big impact on, uh, on like, I wouldn't say to believe again, but to continue believing on, on design, no? on, on the power of, of design. And uh, that, uh, because that was happening all the time, not only during design week, of course, design week is a, is a wonderful time, but uh, also during the whole, year in in milan you know that sure. you breathe and work and live like, design every time in every yes. corner <laughs> even every during corner. aperitivo yeah. when people can get uh, creative and creative and create different uh, ways of do the the aperitivo <laughs> Yeah, it just uh, inaugurated the Adi Design Museum in the past week. Uh, and, you know, we as Polydesign organize international activities for international students. So uh, it's always interesting also to, to understand the point of view of a foreigner person, uh, uh, native born in Cuba, uh, tra traveling to, to Milan and living uh, and working in Miami. How central was the experience, Italian experience? You know, something uh, recognized the, the the made in Italy all over the world. So it's uh, uh, something. Yes. Uh, well, when I start to work here and start to learn that uh, definitely the made in Italy concept and the, the Italian design in general is very strong and it's very well recognized here, not only through the peers, to the professionals of design, but uh, in general to the people uh, italian design is definitely one of the of course the strong tradition but uh, the made in italy uh, marketing i would say it with uh, definitely brand, half a, awesome. yeah the brand have a strong presence here in the in the us uh, for example where our office is located in the design district in the miami design district uh, you have pretty much the most important italian brands uh, here, not only the fashion ones, but all, all the furniture and uh, in the kitchen industry and closet industry and lighting. Um, it's a big uh, show of uh, Italian design. It's definitely sure. the most strong presence in the, in the and I think that uh, uh, in, in uh, myself as interior designer, and as a designer in general, it's very strong. Uh, the the what not only what I learned in Italy because uh, I think what I learned in Italy was a continuation of of, of what I studied in Cuba, but um, it's definitely uh, keeping in mind all the time that I use that I do work and design here everything that I learned there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I see knowing you since long time. I am uh, like. Uh, a fil rouge, uh, uh, they say in, in French, from uh, the Ecotailleur project uh, where you designed the interiors of this center uh, coming to, yeah. to Italy and now uh, designing uh, in an important uh, studio in uh, Miami. Uh, I, I'm really happy because it's a travel. Uh, we were using the metaphor of sailing. Uh, design sailors, yeah. uh, it's a, a long uh, <laughs> travel, even if you are young and millennial, uh, talking about uh, millennial. Uh, I wanted to ask yeah. it to you, Boli, uh, in your keywords, in your value, uh, you you pick up these, uh, these words, uh, preserve humanity and innovation, for sure, mm -hmm. uh, keep, mm -hmm. keep sailing. So it's not easy to preserve humanity in the in a society really focused into business, uh, as uh, as you know, uh, um, which is the secret to to preserve humanity, but to to go faster with technology and to be focused on uh, on business for sure. Yeah, yeah. I think that uh, 
course that nothing uh, or during any design practice in general can lose the perspective of business but uh, technologies need to be designed not only in the future right now you need to be designed having people at center of of, of the core of the, the entire design practice and the only way to guarantee the preservation of of us as humanity is to develop technologies that will support our living systems. Uh, we need to work in multidisciplinary teams where everybody, uh, when all the aspects that interact in the in the in any future design on any future technology uh, is going to be discussed. That is going to be analyzed, and uh, that's why many many professional of different areas need to be involved. And uh, because you need to discuss and solve any problem that during the implementation of those new technologies can can happen. Um, there are today many emerging technologies that are trying to do that. And I think that need to be more, but uh, for example, I read of uh, the, what is called solar glass that is, uh, is used today, is used in some architectural uh, and tall buildings on the for the fasci for the facades and all that, where you can have uh, this is basically a solar panel, but at the same time it's a window. Uh, there is other people searching the how to uh, strat or captures the carbon ox or, or the carbon ox uh, dioxide from the mm -hmm. air, and how to sequester it and helping to reduce the the global warming through that. I don't know. Fundamentally, I think that the technology will be the, the bedrock of our future. And uh, there have to be many efforts on how to undo the damage that we have already caused, caused to the to the planet now. Yes. And figuring yes. how to to these solutions we can make uh, keep our our species to the our our needs of energy, food and, and water. And, and yes. technology need to be done and, and designers need to be work very cross uh, very close with all those pro other professionals yes uh, you know uh, we said in the conversation before that uh, we have a deadline our planet has a deadline and uh, we not just me and you but the planet want to live uh, uh, forever if we do not yeah. make uh, an important change uh, uh, where technologies are for sure important, but uh, we cannot live uh, in a technocracy, which seems that we are living in. We live, it seems, but I don't know if you agree that we live in a world where technology are uh, more important than uh, people. So they they were uh, technology were a tool and now they are deciding uh, exactly. for for us. Uh, uh, so, which is the, the border, uh, from your point of view, between uh, this? How, well, to, I, how, to man how to manage? I don't know. Hmm. It's about uh, policies, for example, regulations, for example, about using technology and which way using technology it's related, for sure, to a lot of different yeah. fields yeah. And, and sectors, uh, uh, really also uh, dangerous uh, for uh, so which is your uh, as, a, as a professional but also as a people a person thinking and uh, people a person looking at your future and the future of uh, the, the young generations yeah and i agree with you that the technology has become so strong that it's uh, bigger than us and it's something that we can stop right away so uh, um, I was reading the other day an article that talking about uh, the different plans, like calling plan A and plan B of humanity. Uh, plan A is that uh, we've got to develop technologies that will help uh, reduce uh, the, the the carbon in the environment, reduce the global warming, reduce uh, and respect all. I mean, all sustainable technologies, but in a real that they will really work. Another plan B that is, of course, something that we don't want is that the, the technologies, and I think this is terrible, that the technology that we're going to create are going to, uh, like, a, it's like a vaccine to the things that, not a vaccine, like a remedy to to things that close the sky, the sky so there's not going to be more uh, of the global warming, and but people are going to, future generations are not going to be able to see the blue of the sky and uh, and plan C, that is something that nobody wants, is the, that any of those technologies help. 
So um, neither the ones that will avoid that or the ones that will create it, uh, a solution to the problem, but will make a bigger problem. Uh, but I think that the only way to do it is uh, being very cautious on what we do and have in mind in all the um, the, the, the areas of the, of design, have uh, not only design in all the areas, be able to develop uh, technologies that will really be efficient in on, on protect uh, the planet and keep the planet uh, uh, functioning. For example, the, um, the, 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 the governments uh, have to increase the, all the measurements and all the policies to, to, to protect that. Recently here in the States, there was a big uh, change on the, the work that the format the height uh, emissions uh, of the products that were produced abroad. Sure. Um, and there was a limitation on how many companies need to change the, the way they, they, they produce and need to change materials because, and, and many, and this affect many of the Italian companies that were working here in the, in the state, they have to change all the, the materials for a long time. I guess that that's, uh, that's his stuff. It's a lot. There's a lot of work to do, but I have uh, everybody need to work a little bit more on it. Yes, I agree. Also, we should have to introduce the concept of uh, ethics, uh, which uh, is something uh, we discussed during those conversation. Ethics is just not uh, a good word, but it's something that uh, could give some rules uh, to how uh, we live, uh, how we work. Uh, and also to give us some uh, borders, because uh, from my point of view, also the, the pandemic uh, situation happened because of uh, uh, lack of uh, rules in general. You know, it's like this faster way of uh, of living. Each day we want to to have more, to produce more, to realize more, to. So I think that the ethics in the job, in the in the in the field of professional field, uh, uh, should have to to help uh, people and professionals as well uh, to to find uh, uh, the balance uh, between uh, the progress and the future and what we need to yeah. to save and to respect in order to have a future. Uh, yeah, especially, for example, this is a big labor that we as interior designer, and I guess, for example, in, in, in one sector that we can really help is on the housing and in the housing yes. sector. We as interior designer and the architects, we need to help on and educate the clients of what type of products and what type of uh, elements they use on the construction of the house. And that need to comply with all those Yes, sure, uh, sure. regulations that will allow us to to reduce uh, and to, sure. to, to protect the environment. I think that's the most important part. And it's something that we can be really involved on that. And that's uh, going back to the beginning of the relation with the client. Once you get a good relation and you have a strong link with the client, you are able to convince them that that's the right way to do because they will believe in what you are telling them. So Sure. Yeah. They are saying to me from the backstage that uh, we need to close. Uh, last question, are you coming back to Havana soon? To Havana? Probably yes, not too you... soon. It's, uh, too it's a bit locked down, locked down there. Unfortunately, the COVID situation is still hard. Uh, so um, as soon as possible, I still have family and friends there. So yes, definitely I want to oh. go. Hope to come back soon and to see you again. Uh, I prefer Havana, as you know, as you are. So <laughs> if I can choose, uh, I will come back. Uh, but to see you again or in Miami, I give the. I thank you very much, Bowley, for thank your you, participation. Thank you, Paula. It's really nice to, to talk and. To